bij Migroen, uh, involved in the Climate Action Camp uh, and also in Climate Justice uh, Action International Network. Absolutely, I, I think when there is really a, a big crisis mm -hmm. and people are really starving, you need to give people food and you need to bring food, that's, mm -hmm. that's only logic. Mm -hmm. yeah. But structurally you would do much better, like give people the means to produce food, give them back their, their land, which is often now uh, occupied by big companies, which are uh, dominated by uh, big multinational corporations. So give people their own land so they can produce their own food. That's much more sustainable than bringing, using a lot of polluting transport to get them food and then destroying their own local food economy. Mm -hmm. So we believe it's not so much about food security, like bring them food, it's about food sovereignty, giving people the means to produce their own food. That's a real solution. Like one typical example is uh, Haiti. Haiti had like, uh, was almost self-sufficient on food. And then at a certain moment, there was a lot of cheap subsidized food, like from America, Europe, like we come here to help you. You get here food uh, when there was hunger. And then you see all these local farmers, even when the, the food crisis, the hunger crisis is more or less over, there, there comes more and more cheap food and the local farmers can't really go in competition with this subsidized food from the west or for the glo from the global north. And then you see that these local farmers see no other option than to sell their land or stop producing food. And at this moment you see that then a country like Haiti, but many others in the global south, become completely dependent from the food that is given by us. It's a completely unsustainable way of uh, having food security. Absolutely, I, I think it goes step by step. The movement won't be there from one day to another. So now it's uh, we had a, bit, a few smaller camps. Last year we had a big camp, and this is the second big climate action camp in this country. There are several other countries. There are in uh, France, in uh, Spain, in Great Britain, which was the original one, uh, Australia. So there are all over the world this kind of camps. So we really try to build from the grassroots bottom up a movement. So we start now with these camps, and we also hope to 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 achieve that we reach a bit more people and have a, a broader basis to also do activities during the year. Because on the camp, well, we also have workshops. So now we do action, but it's not enough to criticize the present system. You need to think about alternative solutions. So bring people together, think about what could we do in our local communities, then try to get more and more people. And it will take time to grow this movement, but it's so important that we just need to invest all the time and energy we have. I think the, the first step is to inform yourself to be aware of all this, because it's sometimes quite complex with how this system works. And if you see that this, in this economic and political system it doesn't work, just, you can do very, well, there are a lot of things you can do, very small things, like going in and try to, uh, to buy your uh, food locally, uh, biological if possible, but also certainly uh, uh, locally, for instance, don't buy apples which are from far away when you know that's perfectly reasonable that apples are grown here. And uh, that's a very small thing. You also can uh, try to search with the energy providers, which energy provider has uh, more sustainable energy. Uh, try to inform yourself as much as possible. And if you want to go a step further, are prepared to go a step further and uh, believe it's really important to do so, you can try to, to go to the website of the Climate Action Camp, of Climate Justice Action, or Friends of the Earth, or whatever, go and, and strengthen the movement and think about solutions, uh, take action and pressure our government, pressure the economy and build a movement from the bottom up that really can make this change happen. Okay. Step by step it can be a long way but it's necessary to take the small steps to do the, the bigger picture in the end. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, uh, on an individual level it's not enough. Well it's an important first step to, to, to look through your own life but of course if, if just we live a bit more sustainable. This whole system, this whole structure of, of uh, injustice in the world, both uh, social injustice and ecological injustice, will remain. So if we really want to have climate justice, we will need to come together, to sit together in our communities, think what can we do as a community? How can we pressure them? How can we create already in the present world alternatives, which could bring us a few steps uh, again, a few steps closer to the alternative, which is the world of climate justice. Personally, I don't believe that in uh, any capitalist system there will be... F Still some planes are leaving, but uh, we've blocked uh, one entrance at least. So, I don't believe that in the capitalist system we will find a solution. 
but well capitalism won't end today or tomorrow so we now need to sit together create alternatives so uh, that, that someday we will be able to overcome this capitalist system and uh, to find a new system to establish a new system with new institutions uh, which are much more sustainable both on the social uh, and a community level and on the ecological level so we we will need a much more local economy and in solidarity with the south but also give these people their chance to have a uh, also um, just to have their own sustainable practices with our big corporations which are determining their lives and having also here our own economy our own food industry which is and more independent and based on the because f fossil fuels are ending and at the one moment they will be completely gone so it's important that we uh, work out these alternatives today because the day will come and it will come soon so we should be prepared and government won't get us prepared uh, neither the economic institutions and big corporations so we will have to do it together in our communities because alone we can't do it and if nobody else will do it, we will have to do it. The climate camp uh, itself tries to uh, run at uh, so sustainable as possible ways. So um, we, we try to use as, as less as possible energy and uh, water and so on. We also have uh, our own system to create energy. Uh, but it's not much, but you also don't need that much. People are used to use a lot of energy. But if you think about it, you really can reduce your consumption. For the rest, we are just we, are, we do a lot of debates because this is really like a, a starting movement. It's now a few years old, but we really need to grow in our ideas and in our alternatives. And then some of the alternatives that we propose are like okay, focus on food sovereignty uh, and 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 other options like that, like low uh, community controlled economy. Like we, we need de more democracy, not less, but not only on the political level, but also on the economical level. That the community can decide itself what do we need to produce for human need and not for profit. So therefore the community should sit together and work together on an uh, alternative, uh, localized economy, which is also community controlled. So food sovereignty, uh, community controlled economy, also renewable energy where possible, and uh, that are just a few of the different aspects which could um, lead to solutions. But it's a complex story, there are a lot of different aspects, not only small bits. But today we, we see that a lot of these bits, we are nowhere yet. So it's just by taking them on one by one, and even at the same time sometimes, that people take them on. And in this way we can lead towards uh, a real solution which will take time but it's necessary to start today really today because time is running out uh, i think it's uh, it's a nice camp it's uh, it has uh, also nice uh, surroundings there's a bit nature around actually that's part of what you are fighting for so that's uh, very nice to see uh, for the rest there were a lot of interesting debates and workshops uh, nice people i think it's always also good to see in in, in belgium in this country you very often see uh, that everything is like made into a language issue between the French speaking and Dutch speaking people. And here you see this climate crisis, this biological crisis. It won't stop at the language border, it won't stop at any border. Everybody will be affected, and while well, the economic weak uh, will be affected most, but everyone will be affect, uh, affected. So we also say, why should we organize our own camps? Uh, just do it together and see maybe you on a political level are arguing about all these issues which separates us, but we are here together and we say this is the real issue. And we work together on this issue that they seem to forgot. So actually this is a, for us a real alternative, not going competition with each other, but working to, together and Let's be realistic, okay, there can be some language issues sometimes, but this crisis, this climate crisis, is so much more fundamental and important. And they should be talking about that, not about all these small things that divide us. When you, we see in this camp that so much connects us, and we can work together, we, we try to, well, sometimes we communicate in English, we try to speak each other languages, we just find ways to communicate. And so we prove in this camp that this communication is possible, well, we see that for, yeah, for instance, for politicians, it doesn't seem possible. So maybe they should come to our camp to see how it could work before sitting there together and talking about things they don't seem to be able to solve. <laughs>